right. Well, good evening, ladies. Thank you so much for coming. We have a good crowd here tonight. That's awesome. Um, again, I am on my phone, so I can't see all of you. I can only right now see Ashley, Marley, and Diana. But I know a lot more people are on here. Um, and if you do questions in the messages, I may see them later. Um, but I'll also try to do like a little Q&A at the end. I'll keep an eye on the time so we don't take up your whole evening. Um, I did do a little YouTube video this past week and there might be some crossover with the training that I'm doing tonight, but repetition is always a good thing anyway. So um, tonight we're gonna talk about keeping our funnels full. And I think that is often a challenge for people. They're like, I don't have anyone else to talk to. I don't know how to keep people in my funnel. If, you, if you're new and you don't know what I mean by funnel, I basically what that means is like the people that you are getting into conversation about Plexus. So, um, you know, it starts wide and it goes narrow because not everyone's gonna sign up, right? We wish it looked more like just a tube and everyone that you put in there <laughs> would start with you, but it's more like a funnel. But sometimes we run into this situation where people are like, I don't like, I don't know how to keep people coming consistently. If you've had that problem, go ahead and say yes in the chat um, because you are not alone for sure. Um, but we're going to give some great ideas today that will hopefully help you keep that funnel full. Um, now, step one, honestly, is a mindset thing. And we talk about mindset a lot um, in Melissa's team, in Plexus at large. Um, but it really is so important to realize that when you are talking to people, you are not pushing something down their throat. You have something really awesome to offer. And if you don't believe that in your mind, you need to start there because it's going to keep you from talking to as many people as you should be talking to because you're gonna be afraid that you're annoying, that you're being selfish or pushy. Um, and if that thought starts in your brain, you're going to back off and be afraid to talk to people. So let's remember, these are life-changing products that we have, right? And this is a life-changing opportunity. There are people out there and there will always be people out there who need these products and who need this business. Somebody's not muted. If you can mute yourself, that'd be awesome. I'm not sure who. Thank you. Um, so how many of you have struggled with that? Like, I don't want to be weird or salesy or pushy. If that's you, say yes in the comments. Yeah, I think that's something that we all have to push through. And But once you get to the other side where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm offering a service that people need, just like any other service out there that people charge for or that um, people sell, like you would never judge a baker for pushing his bread like to say, I have amazing bread, you should try it, right? So why do we get down on ourselves for offering amazing health products? So let's start there, um, because if your mindset is right, you will be more confident in reaching out. So keep that in mind if you're taking notes. Um, and then there are just a few practical things that I do to keep my funnel full. Now, I won't say that I've always been good at this. I have actually had months stretches on end where I have felt like it's a tiny little drip coming into my funnel, and that can be very discouraging. However, part of that was my mindset. Part of that was me not feeling confident in what I had to offer. Um, but over the past few months, I feel like I've found a great method for keeping my funnel full. So the first thing that I want to say is obviously reaching out. 
that sounds like a no brainer, but if you're not reaching out, you're not really growing your business. And what I mean by reaching out is actually talking to and messaging people. Um, that can be relationally to start, that can be about the products, talking about health, talking about the business, but you need to be the one that's initiating conversations with people. It's very rare that we will have a viral post like we did in June that works where people will be asking you to give them your product. You will need to be the one that initiates. And if you're still uncomfortable with that, please talk to me or your upline because there is a way to do it that feels natural and um, free and just amazing. Really, you just have to think about if I was having a face-to-face -face conversation with this person, how would I talk, right? You just want to be normal, but you also want to be intentional. So in Plexus, we often talk about the send, share, invite system. Um, most of you will know what send, share, invite is, but for those of you who don't, you may have been doing it. Um, you may have been doing it without realizing it. Oh, somebody not muted. <laughs> so send, share, invite. Step one, send, is when you send um, a message to somebody. And that message could be, um, hey, I don't know if you have seen my post recently about this gut health stuff I've been using, but I've been thinking about you and was wondering if I could send you a quick video. Um, and would that be okay with you? They say yes, then you share a video. Send, share a video or a story or a testimony or tag them on a post that they think that you think they would relate to. And then invite is invite them to sign up, invite them to an event, invite them to get on the phone with you, invite them to something that is an action step. So send, share, and invite is like central to the plexus system so if you're doing that every day that will help keep your funnel full but again it requires that um confident courageous thinking of i have something wonderful to offer um so that leads me to events we have been doing quite a few events on this team um, we do a three-day challenge every two weeks that Diana has so marvelously pioneered for us. <laughs> and let me tell you that that event works. Every single time my team is intentional about joining that event, we sign people up. The other cool thing about it is, okay, who's not muted, <laughs> sorry. The other cool thing about it is it stays static. So that group is always the same link every single time. What does that mean? That means some people are going to see that event three, four, five, six, seven times before they decide to take the plunge. But it is dripping on them. Every two weeks, the event starts. People are sharing lives. Some new posts are added things are happening, people get excited. So if you choose to be intentional about using the Send, Share, Invite system and inviting people into an event like the three-day challenge, you will keep your funnel full. And you can also keep track of those people who stay engaged in the group but haven't signed up yet. And you can be like, hey, I noticed that you commented on that post. Um, in the group that happened this week, what was it that stood out to you? Or if we have a new post that reminds you of that person that's already in that group, you can tag them and say, hey, I wanted you to see this since you're in this group. Is this making sense to you so far? Yes? Okay, so events are so important. My team and a lot of your teams are doing girls' nights out. Um, today, we did a virtual ladies lunch in lieu of a girls night out because a lot of people are available at lunchtime. 
Um, so we've done some of those on Zoom, we've done some of those on Facebook. And my team is really, really intentional about getting people into those groups. And again, every time we have a group, we sign people up. So right now we're having like at least two of those kinds of events every week. We're also doing calls um, to tell people about the bonuses. Listen guys, every single one of you on this call is capable of doing a girls night out, of doing a referral bonus call. You just have to like snag the info that's on Roz's page or on this page about the bonuses, um, about the products. Melissa set up girls night out event for you start to finish. There's a post in passionate pursuit. You can set it up. You can make it happen. You don't have to wait for somebody to do it for you. Even if you're just doing it for yourself and your own people, you can do it. But let me just tell you, events work. 30, third party validation works. And we have kept using the same Facebook page, Facebook group over and over for our girls' nights. So there have been people who have been in it two to three times and then they decide to take the leap. So again, if you're reaching out every day and you're inviting people to events, you continue to have people in your funnel. It's up to you, however, to keep track of those people. So make sure that you have a system, a notebook, using the app. I'm using the Plexus Engage app now to keep track of all my prospects. I'm loving it. It's awesome. It reminds you when to follow up with people. You can keep it in a notebook or whatever, but you want to know who's where, like who's in the three-day group. Who has signed up from that? Who's in your girls' nights? Who has signed up from that? Who have you reached out to? Have you followed up, to, up with them in the last week? Reaching out and following up is the core of your business and keeping people in your funnel. Following up is so important and I think it's something that we miss a lot or we get nervous about. You're like, I've sent three messages to this person and they haven't responded. Like, I hear it all the time. I see that they read it, but maybe they don't like what I had to say, or maybe I'm bugging them. And you make assumptions about those people. Always assume the best about other people and what they're thinking. Like, they have three kids. They haven't had time to respond. <laughs> like, maybe next time I'll just reach out and say, hey, how's it going with those kiddos over there? Are you staying alive? <laughs> and then start a conversation that way you can always find other ways to talk to people but um I watched the Robin Sullivan training this week and she was basically saying you don't stop talking to people until they tell you to stop like do not contact me again or until they die <laughs> so which is funny not funny but that's really because what we have to offer is so great and so if someone doesn't specifically say, stop it, I don't want to hear from you anymore, there's no reason not to keep reaching out. Um, and you'll be surprised who will sign up with you when you are consistent with reaching out and following up 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 times, whether it's about their kids or about the product, or I tagged you on this testimony, or this made me think of you. Keep it fresh, keep it real, but don't forget to do the follow-ups. Okay, are, are we good so far? We're good. All right, sweet. So now I'm gonna go into social media um, and how to keep your funnel filled from social media because um, social media is really the unique place that we get to meet new people especially during COVID season when we can't be like going to our Bible studies or joining groups or whatever. We don't see like our soccer mom friends and all those things right now. Um, but you can always meet new people on social media. There is an endless supply of awesome people <laughs> on social media. So how do you find them? Well, first you want to begin to rebuild relationships with acquaintances that you have. Um, you can reach out to those people from college or wherever you know them and just be like, hey, I saw your name pop up today. How in the world are you? Um, what's this season been like for you? Just be really authentic. You don't want to jump in and just be like, hey, we haven't talked in 10 years. Here's my product. Do you want to try it? 
you know, that's usually not going to work. Um, so be real, be engaging. Don't underestimate the power of creating a real relationship. I'm telling you that um, those people that I have been cultivating real relationships with and haven't even talked about Plexus, not that I wouldn't have, but those are the people that are starting to reach out to me about the products, about the business. Um, so start there. But for those of you who are like, I just don't have a lot of, I don't have a big network on social media. Um, I don't know how to meet new people. I'm going to repeat some of the things that I said earlier this week. And one big thing that we always talk about is joining groups, right? Join Facebook groups. But you're like, what group? What does that mean? I have no idea where to start. So I would say make a list of like five things that are unique about you that have nothing to do with Plexus. Like for me, for example, I'm an adoptive mom. Um, I am a vegan. So I'm in some adoption groups. I'm in some vegan groups. I'm in a group called Moms of Black Boys because I have a black son. Um, those are very niche groups like that are unique to me and that I actually am interested in that I, yeah, vegans. <laughs> hey, Gobby, yes. Gobby, can I share? Because this is very close to my heart with the groups. Yes, like when I started Plexus, I, all, I didn't have a lot of confidence. So I've had a lot of old friends join me in the past year, but at first I remember like where I was when I heard about how joining Facebook groups is a way to make friends and add new people because it, it's what made me not quit Plexus because I was like, Oh my gosh. So anyone, most of the main players on my team, I met in Facebook groups. I've never met in person. My Brittany, I've never met her in person. Like it's amazing. We have something in common. It's mm -hmm. almost easier to like really bond and connect when you have like, cause mine are autism, it was preschool, teacher, things like that. I mean, you guys, it's amazing how people will connect. And if you just listen to people and ask them about their lives, they connect to you. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Almost yeah. better than in person because you're like, you're someone outside of their circle so they can kind of open up to you. It's really cool. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Um, and I, it took me a while to catch the vision for groups, to be honest, because if you know me, I'm like, a, come on, let's get it done. Go get her. <laughs> Seal the deal. Let's move. <laughs> you know, But groups take a little more patience, but I've been really surprised actually with how quickly things can move with people that you meet in groups. So how do you make friends in groups? I'm sure some of you are thinking that question. So I'm going to try to help you with that. There are several ways that you can actually make friends in groups. Um, one is by posting things in the groups that are relevant to the group. A great thing to do is ask a question from the group about that niche that they're expert in. Like, how do you season your tofu scramble that you make for breakfast? That's a question that I literally had yesterday for one of my vegan groups. Um, or if you're in a pet group, like my cat is allergic to its litter. What's a great allergen-free cat litter? I don't know if that's even a thing, but I'm just throwing it out there. People love to give their advice, okay? They love it. So then you start getting engagement on your posts, right, in the group. You respond to all of those people. Yeah, nutritional yeast. <laughs> you respond to all those people and then you can friend request them. There's no rule about not friend requesting people unless perhaps it's specifically stated in the rules of that group. I have never seen that. Um, but I friend so many people in groups, but not until I actually have some kind of engagement with them. You can also engage on other people's posts. You can respond to their questions. You can like their pictures. You can friend request those people. Not everyone is going to accept your friend request. Now, this is where things can sometimes go sideways with groups. Um, things can go sideways with groups if you're like, 
in a group that's talking a lot about health and you are like, oh my gosh, I have a solution to your problem. And I'm, I'm saying this from experience because I've done it. Okay. I think a lot of us have done it. Um, that's a really good way to a get kicked out of a group to like feel spammy. Um, and three, not create genuine relationships. So groups do again, require some patience, but it's so worth it. So let me just tell you from last month, I signed up um, 10 people and I think almost all of them I had met in groups in the prior three weeks. So it doesn't have to take forever, but I had started generating an authentic relationship. So how do you build that authentic relationship? So when you're on Facebook and you've made all these new friends, which you're not randomly just friending people, it's people who have engaged on your stuff, people that you've talked to, but it can be a lot of people, right? Um, so I can go into my friends list on Facebook and sort it by most recent. And those most recent friends are the friends that you've added most recently. I'll spend five to 10 minutes a day, literally five to 10 minutes. It's not that long. Clicking on each one of those new people and engaging on their posts liking and commenting, liking and commenting. Um, I try to reach every new friend, newish friend, at least twice a week, liking and commenting. Guess what? It gets reciprocated. They start liking and commenting your stuff. They start seeing your stories. Um, this is also a reason to be very, very genuine when you post as well. Because if you friend somebody, and they're like, hmm, who's this chick who's trying to friend request me? Oh, look at her page. Plexus, 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 plexus. No, I do not want to be sold to. I'm not going to accept that person's friend request. No way. But if they look and they're like, oh, cute kids. Look, a roller coaster. Oh, sweet dog. Hey, cool, plexus. That's going to be a totally different feel. They'll accept your friend request. Um, so that, is, that brings me to the next thing that keeps your funnel full and that is posting and if you're engaging with a lot of new people you need to be posting genuine posts on Facebook um, and Instagram if that's your jam we can have another talk about Instagram another day but Facebook seems to be where it's at right now um, so you need to post every single day that doesn't mean you need to post about plexus every single day. Usually I say like every five to six posts, unless you're in a big push season. Um, but where you can post about plexus every day is in your stories. I always say stories is my storefront. So if you're not utilizing stories or you don't know how, that is something you should probably learn stat because I will say probably, if I'm estimating properly, at least 50% of the people that I've signed up in the last year have been because of stories. Um, I have reached out to people who have viewed a series of stories or I put polls or questions and they respond. Um, so stories is somewhere where you can shamelessly sell Plexus every single day. But on your feed, you don't want that feed full of Plexus stuff. Your stories too. You want to change it up, do something silly, talk about your kids. Diana is like a total pro at stories. I love how she does stories because they're so fun. Um, they're so engaging. People just like her because she your talks. Your stories are so cool. Thank you. But this I is the star of my stories right here. Yeah, she Yay. is. Love Chica. <laughs> um, so that is really what I wanted to say. Those four things working in harmony together, send, share, invite, um, events, posts, stories, and making friends in groups will keep your funnel full. It takes intentionality on your part. All those new friends are not going to just start engaging with you because you friended them. You need to take the step and engage with them. Um, I'm going to have you unmute yourself, Ashley, and ask the question just to the whole group.
All right. Uh, my question was, is do we send out samples? Um, I have mixed feelings about it because obviously I want them to taste uh, the slim, but it's not really doing anything in one sample. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Or um, even, I mean, I think I'd be okay with sending like lean samples just so they can taste it um, and it actually taste like chocolate or vanilla or whatever. Um, but I've had people ask for um samples like my family and stuff like my mom like I get, of course i gave my mom one and then she signed after she tried it but also she's my mom so she mm -hmm. i was like just do it but um but yeah for people that live out of state or not close to me how do you do that without you know sending them all of your slim kind of thing because one really is doesn't for me anyways i feel like three four days straight on pink drinky philly effects mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I know a lot of different people have a lot of different opinions okay. about it. I'll tell you where I come from is I use samples as kind of a last resort. Um, now, the Plexus Engage app has kind of changed the game. If you don't have the app yet, you can send samples from the app, which is super cool. And one of the ways that I have been using that is with conversations that have just gone stagnant. Like we've talked and talked, nothing's happened. And then I was like, like this friend that I sent one to last week, I'm like, hey, Tajwana, send me your address. I'm sending you some slim, you're gonna love it. Like, no question, hey, do you wanna try it? No, I just, and then she got it in the mail and she was like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. <laughs> so um, that is one way that I think the Plexus Engage app is gonna change the game for me. Um, because there are a lot of stagnant conversations out there that I could reignite by just offering them a gift. So that's one way that I use it. The other way that I use samples, and again, other people are gonna have different opinions, but you are on my team, so <laughs> um, I can tell you how I approach it. When people say to me, like I'm in a conversation, they're like, sounds really interesting, do you guys have samples? Then I will say something like, we sure do, but, you're not really gonna see a benefit or a difference on a sample. And the cool thing is our products have a 60 day money back guarantee. So you can literally try an entire pack of each of these products for a month or two months. And if you just hate it, you can send it back and get your money back. But at least then you get to feel if there's a difference at no risk. Um, but if they're still hesitant, every once in a while i might i might send out one sample a month to a person like that but i always try to bring it back around to you're gonna get the most benefit if you just go for the pack right now because you have a 60-day money-back guarantee literally if you hate it like it's not going to be a problem but then too when they actually have the pack in their hands and they're like i don't love the slim it's too sweet you can then direct them to like, well, why don't we do half a slim in the same amount of water? Or you can put it in a smoothie, like give them options of ways to do it if they don't like the taste. Um, so that's really the direction that I take. I, if someone says, do you have samples? I don't just say, yeah, they're right here. Here's the link. Go. No, I always try to redirect and get them to sign up. And I'm, usually it works. I'll be honest especially when I say you're not really going to see a difference. But if they're just like, I'm so worried, I'm going to hate it. No, I really don't. Then I'll send them a sample. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Um, any other questions? Just go ahead and unmute yourselves. I'll say something. Okay. Um, just to add to, just to add to the whole um, concept of whether to send a sample or not. Um, some people are looking for an answer to what they're dealing with. I was looking, um, but it took a year for me to find what the answer was and it was plexus, but I didn't try samples. It wasn't offered to me. What was offered to me, was an invite to a seven day event, which I obliged. 
halfway through that seven day event, it was like day three, I was like, this stuff sounds amazing. So I had already made my own personal decision halfway through, now we only do three days events, but um, two years ago it was seven. So by the time the week was over, I was like, sign me up, what do I need to do? So people are looking and so, um, and like I said, I didn't get my sample until after I signed up and my welcome pack had been ordered. So and I got like, my prize was a sample pack um, for being in the event. So um, just be encouraged that don't feel bad about not sending everyone a sample. Um, it's, it helps just a small amount of people and sometimes um, I've experienced that I've sent samples to people and they forget to take them. So that's where a follow-up is key. Like, oh gosh, yeah, I forgot to take them. And so follow-up is key. So having samples, you're just sometimes just burning money might help you on the tax side of things at the next year. But um, the Engage app, I would highly recommend um, downloading. I actually, when I returned from Kansas, um, my husband said, oh, I have a prospect we need to send a sample to. And I said, you need to download the Engage app. You need to get him information in the Engage app and send it out. So my husband is managing his own prospects through his Engage app and I don't have to do that. So that was the beauty of the Engage app. So I highly recommend that um, you do that. But just, just know people are looking and a sample may not seal the deal. Um, it just depends on who you're speaking with, so. And the thing is too, if you do send a sample, that doesn't mean someone's gonna buy something from you. You have to be so intentional about following up with those people. Did you take it? Did you take it? Did you try it? Did you try it? You would be surprised how many times you're like, oh no, it's still on the counter. I'm like, girlfriend, I spent real money on this product. You need to drink it. Come on, stop. Like what, what's holding you back really from trying um, and really getting them to try it and really talking up the benefits of it. So um, samples work and they do work, but it can give people an opportunity to um, decide over time they don't want it. Like, oh, it's been three days. It doesn't feel exciting to me anymore. Oh, here's my sample, whatever. I'm going to throw it on my counter. Um, but for some people, it is the thing that seals the deal. So you really just have to feel it out for a single person. Anybody else? Any questions about reach outs, events, social media engagement? Just a thank you for the reminder about the groups. Um, because uh, I think it's easy to maybe underestimate the opportunities there. Um, and that's something that I had gotten away from. So I look forward to Sorry about that nose, uh, getting back to it. Awesome. Yeah, it can feel intimidating at first to set it up. Then once you set it up and it's there and you realize you get to touch a lot of people all at the same time, it's so worth it. Yeah, and I, I actually love engaging. It's just, it, it takes time and I tend to prioritize other areas. And, but I, I did, start engaging um i guess about two months ago on a on a just a, a health focused instagram and found a whole pocket of women who are concerned about their face um their cystic acne and their big push is just to be happy with with the way they look mm. you know, and just to be happy and accept it and, that, and that's great but also let's get help you know but there's a whole big big populations of people that have a cause like that that mm -hmm. it takes time to tap into but it's there i will say i think yet. diana will probably agree with me too is people that um label themselves by their issues so like chronic illness or endometriosis or hypothyroidism and stuff they're really not open to trying stuff 
because there's some kind of comfort in that label and in the community that they find with that label. Um, so I can't even begin to tell you how much time I've spent trying to help people with chronic migraines and stuff like that. But people who you just meet through a hobby or mutual interests or in your city, they're gonna be much more inclined. So not to like rain on your parade, but just don't spend a lot of time there. Don't spend all your time in groups about diseases or health issues or ha like I would spend so much time on these hashtags trying to talk to people. And then I was like, oh, wait, they kind of like their label. They mm -hmm. don't try anything. So yeah. that's a good word. That's a good word because I hadn't, I hadn't exhausted it at all. Cause that takes, that takes a lot of time too. But what I did do didn't seem to pull any interest. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, a, and the same tone of things, like I don't, like I don't recommend joining like health groups because most of them feel like they already know what to do for health. So I really, the hobbies and the common things, you wanna do that stuff that's like actually not super related to health. Um, anxiety is another one to watch out for. Like don't go seeking, I don't recommend seeking out highly anxious people <laughs> either because like, it's not that I wouldn't help someone if they came to me, but they also, they struggle with trying things, doing things. So it's so hard because we see someone who struggled with the same thing we struggled. We're like, oh my gosh, if you would just take ease, you would have a chance to make it through your periods for reals. But they're just not open. I have had a couple endo people sign up, but only one is stuck with it well. Um, PCOS, just FYI, PCOS people are a lot better fit for some reason for me. <laughs> Um, I think they don't quite identify quite as much, but that's a really, really good point, Gabby. Yeah. Really but listen, the people who don't like engage with groups like that, but have those issues, those are the people that are going to reach out to you. So for example, yesterday, um, a lady that I just became friends with through my moms of black boys group, and I've been engaging on her stuff. She saw a weight loss post that I did and she messaged me out of the blue. She's like, I need to lose 25 more pounds. I lost 10, can't lose any more. What do you have? Like, I don't even know this person, but those are the kinds of people that you want to attract. It's just like, I'm a normal person just like you, but I have this product. <laughs> and then they'll start engaging with you, hopefully. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Good. All right. Oh, is someone getting on? Yes, no. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. I love you all. Um, have an awesome evening and keep up the good work. We're still in momentum. Lots of good things happening this summer. Let's all go to leaders retreat, hey? Yes. Yeah. All right. Love you guys. Thanks, Tommy. Bye.